and uh, in this session we will discuss about IGM belief networks and its implementation in Python. And after that, we will cover the implementation perspective of different approaches like uh, random forest approach. So, first of all, we see what is Bayesian network or Bayesian belief network. Just to cope up with any uh, situation, uh, just to uh, find out a particular decision in which a number of probabilities are associated. So, in that particular scenario, we work with Bayesian belief network or simply Bayesian networks. Okay, as you can see here. So it is directly concerned with probabilistic belief okay, or uncertainty. How to deal with the uncertainty? In our routine life, in our uh, routine scenario, there are so many uh, situations, there are so many scenarios in which there are number of possible solutions are available and uh, we have to find out the best optimal or the best fit solution for that particular thing. And in routine applications also, what we do, we simply write down, we simply note down different options along with their probabilities. Is it audible to all the participants? Please confirm in chat. Are we getting the audio? The audio and uh, this notepad file visible to all of you. Okay. So we are discussing about Bayesian networks or Bayesian belief networks. That is same thing. So in any optimization based situation, any probabilistic scenario, there are so many solutions associated with a particular person, with a particular situation. So, to cope up with this particular thing, we have to work with Bayesian belief networks. We create a particular table, we create a particular, uh, we, we list out all the possible outcomes along with their probabilistic values, along with their probability value, so that Whenever the situation comes on taking this specific decision, then we can match that particular value or then we can match which specific outcome should be there. In this uh, session, we will take different examples, uh, different real life examples on gaming also, how to work on gaming applications also. And uh, as you can see, this is the main thing, this is the main aspect of Bayesian network to resolve the uncertainty. And the base of Bayesian belief networks is the Bayes theorem. So at the back end, you can see that there are a number of parameters involved, A, B, C, D, or whatever it is. Suppose now we relate it to some real life example, what is Bayes theorem or what is probabilistic reasoning. If, suppose we are having a, a specific situation that if a person, if, if the age of a particular person is greater than 50 years. So okay. can you be a bit louder? So some participants okay. are saying that they're not uh, getting the audio, audio clearly. Okay, okay. Okay, now is the audio clear? Are you getting the audio? Is Sir, audio no, it is fine, uh, but when you you know saying a long sentence then it gradually you know slows down okay. a bit so okay okay so is it okay now is this is the audio quality clear now uh, please your answer uh, write it in the chat box if it is okay then we can continue please confirm yes sir fine audio fine sir okay. now if we relate these things if we relate whatever we have discussed just now in a real world example, suppose age of a particular person is greater than 50 years and that person, that particular person takes smoke also, that is habitual of smoking also. So with this and uh, 
alcohol so different uh, parameters we are associating with a particular situation in that case the probability of uh, getting cancer or the probability of having a specific disease is 0.8 so 80 percent probability is there okay so this is the first situation this is the first scenario first condition if i write it like this okay if we write another scenario if age is greater than 50 years 60 years and no smoke but takes alcohol then the probability of death or the probability of a particular disease is 0 0.72 like 7273 or whatever it is so what we are doing here we have uh, written down we have noted down two possible outcomes along with the associated parameters along with the associated conditions so these are known as conditions age is greater than 50 no alcohol like this so if it, so this can be associated for cancer or whatever it is okay for this if we take another scenario like as, as, as far as the current scenario is concerned covid 19 we are having a particular data set and uh, in that suppose age is greater than 60 years and uh, that is that particular patient is already is already diabetic that is having some uh, issues related to breathing also breathing issues in that case the probability becomes 0 0.92 like this so what is what we are doing here so what we can do we can write age as x diabetes as y and breathing problem as v or z and then we are associating these values with 0 0.9% probability of death or COVID-19 positive or negativity or whatever it is. So it depends on your data set. It depends on your uh, research problem on which particular research problem you are covering. Is this point clear to all of you? But what we have discussed so far uh, in case of Bayesian belief network, what to do? Up to this point, is, this, is it clear to all of you? Up to this point, are you getting the things clear? Okay. Now, uh, if, if I create a diagram from this particular thing, if I create a diagram, then in that case you can see that age, and uh, if I take like breathing, breathing issues, and uh, if I if I'm taking this diagram. And uh, if I'm able to create a particular diagram like this, it is directly related to the problems associated with diabetic or not. Okay. If somebody is having diabetes, then there are more chances that uh, that particular person is also having some breathing issues, and its probability is suppose uh, 0 0.3. That age with diabetes is 0 0.8. Okay. And uh, if I relate age with breathing issues, obviously we are uh, associating this. And uh, so this is this diagram we are creating. And uh, obviously age with breathing, then 0 0.72. So this is known as your network. So this type of network, this type of network programming we do, we perform in case of Bayesian belief network. And at the back end, there is Bayes theorem. In Bayes theorem, also uh, we perform same thing. We are having so many parameters, and uh, we find out the probabilities. We find out the association between number of objects. Okay. Now, uh, what we do in case of Bayesian belief network ahead? Now you can see this. Uh, obviously, it is model or network-based approach, and the base property, the base property of Bayesian belief networks is directed acyclic graph. Directed acyclic graph means uh, in, whenever we create the diagram, whenever we create our network from different possibilities, 
so different conditions then that particular graph should be dag directed as a graph it means there will be no cycles okay. so we create the diagram in such a way or we follow the diagram in such a way that cycles should not be there and uh, so uh, directed uh, directed as cyclic graph means a to b b to c and then c to a like this okay it should not happen so we should be uh, very much careful about different types of conditions so can, so uh, why we go for directed as cyclic graph so that infinite loop cannot take place to avoid to get rid of the infinite loop so that's why we take that particular thing and uh, this is the second point this is the second parameter second property of uh, any bayesian belief network any bayesian belief graph that is your cpt cpt means your combined probability table or conditional probability table okay so what we do first of all we create a particular diagram or we find out different possibilities different probabilities and depending upon those probabilities what we do we create a combined condition combined or conditional probability table what is meaning of conditional probability table conditional probability table is having all the possibilities with, with their outcomes with their possible outcomes i think everybody might have done some uh, questions some particular uh, numericals in uh, plus 1 and plus 2 like probability so if there are if, if there are two possibilities of a particular coin, point like heads and tail okay and there is no biasing in that particular coin and five times a coin is thrown okay we have done toss for five times so 10 times and six times we obtained head then how much probability is there that there is biasing okay so such type of problems such type of situations can be easily handled by combined probability table and at broader way using bayesian belief networks okay are you getting the audio please confirm are you getting the audio and the text clearly please confirm in chat is the audio and text visible to all the participants yes sir they are saying yes okay okay so now we will see the implementation part up to now we have come to know that what is bayesian belief network in which particular area it can be used in which particular domain it can be implemented there are so many application areas of bayesian belief networks not not only for a uh, toss not only for a particular uh, situation okay you can implement bayesian belief network for prediction of malware suppose you are working on malware prediction you have collected the uh, network data from some particular source and you want to find out how much uh, how, uh, how what is the probability of malware in that particular data set whether the, the higher number of malware are there or lesser number of malware are there okay in prediction of disease okay as so many diseases are nowadays Uh, spread and we can find out how much probability is there that this part this particular person is cancer positive how much probability is there that uh, this much this particular person is di diabetic okay if some particular person is diabetic and age is greater than 70 years then how much probability is there that uh, this person is covid positive or might be covid covid positive or whether we should go for a particular explicit test or not whether a particular test of a disease should be applied on this type of person okay so prediction of disease prediction of malware and web traffic are 
actually in pi pi dot org you can check this command and this is the function this is the command pip install by zine okay. so what i will do suppose i am already having anaconda so in anaconda prompt this is your anaconda prompt okay in anaconda prompt i write pip install by zine and if my internet is working then automatically byzion network automatically this particular package will be installed okay in same way i can install omega net in my system it is already installed in my anaconda this is already installed and you can see that it is a python utility which is about the probabilities okay and it uses bayesian system to extract the features and to work on the likelihood so its sample code are also given on this portal so first of all we can solve this package and then we work with this particular library okay now if i show you a very simple demonstration of bayesian belief network and how to work with this in very simple way uh, i'm showing you a very simple code anaconda prompt you can uh, simply from start menu to open uh, anaconda prompt simply go to start menu where write anaconda and you will see anaconda prompt and anaconda navigator and this anaconda powershell prompt so you will have to open this anaconda prompt from your start menu so you can install anaconda prompt for this and now i'll show you a very simple code of byz network then you will come to know and this code is concerned with this is very simple uh, code snippet just to understand the way in which byz network works so you can see that as already we have installed bayesian so from bayesian import classify and this classify file okay. import bayesian bayesian network is have integrated and but this command will work only if you have installed bayesian using anaconda from okay now as you can see that i'm having this particular data i have prepared a data set of spams this is spams and if i mention in spam one is this error attack second is dear recipient and third spelling this so i'm defining the values which are associated with spams so if anybody will send me a particular message and that message will be having the combination of these in that is automatically using bayesian network it will find out that this is a this is similar to spam message okay in a similar way genuine this is your genuine wait tomorrow this is genuine you can increase it also i will show you the Uh, updation also okay remember to buy milk like this okay suppose these two messages these two values one is this and second this i have defined so that we can identify the type of message okay and this is the actual message now suppose i have sent a particular message will be meet and move tomorrow for this then under which particular class it will come so will we meet meet is available here meet is available in spams also and uh, move tomorrow for but, but move tomorrow is available but for terror attack but terror attack is available in this is it audible to all the participants are you getting the audio because some participants are saying about audio Is the audio called? Is the audio clear to all the participants? Okay. 
now from this message this is this is the uh, this is a particular variable okay it is any variable you can you can relate it with a particular mail message suppose this is the actual mail message automatically this particular mail message um, uh, this, <coughs> if i am using this particular message i want to associate this particular message with this or with this okay so whenever we get emails so from that particular email if i want to analyze suppose i am writing some particular first of all i am executing this code so that we can play with the code we can modify the code and then you will see the outputs so i am using spider you can use any in spider or in uh, jupiter you can use this particular code so i'm copying this code and do uh, it simply anywhere you can put it okay now i want to classify i want to use this particular message i want to check under which category this particular message is now you can see that it is genuine will be meet tomorrow meet tomorrow with tomorrow okay for this car okay now if i change this particular message for and meet urgent dear recipient so um, this is similar to the email message so this is the way by which you can filter the messages for filtering the messages okay here recipient will be meet and move tomorrow okay it is urgent now i will see it comes to spam is it visible to me because most of the words or so many words i have taken which are covered under this particular section under this particular data set is it visible to all of you are you able to view the output are you able to view this output is it visible to all of you please respond in chat uh, is this point clear so how to classify the messages suppose i i take a big message so <clears throat> okay dear dear sir please me tomorrow and we will meet it is urgent okay so you can see that urgent is there meet is there like this okay. now you see under spam but if i will use the words which are associated with this will make tomorrow and please number to by now you can see that genuine those the words we are taking from these two data sets so automatically filtering will be applied so now you can see that without using any uh, classification algorithm i have not trained the data set what is the main benefit of using this we are not using any training we have not using we have not used any uh, network we have uh, not used any uh, not used any specific machine learning model okay by default using this bayesian it is able to classify okay. so in minimum lines of code in minimum uh, coding you can perform this type of implementation okay so i will uh, share this code to all of you so that you can uh, see so uh, yes definitely in uh, in uh, google collab also we have to integrate it so in google collab we have to install it by if install bayesian okay 
or what you can do if you want to uh, work on cloud based implementation like google cloud there is another platform that also you can explore if that is your neptune.ai how many of you are aware with this platform if you already know about this platform yes or no neptune okay are you able to do this so neptune is also very powerful platform for machine learning for deep learning and you can directly work with it why do neptune you can simply you can create your account and similar to google collab you can work with it you see how much how much space it is given to you give it to me google collab provides this neptune provides 100 gb of space okay so you can create a project in this and you can see that in notebooks so in your anaconda uh, in, in your anaconda prom you can work with this photo and after that you will have to configure your existing neptune your existing jupiter in your current jupiter platform you will have to configure it okay. so using this particular code we automatically a particular bayesian network will be constructed at the back end okay at the back end the bayesian belief network will be created and further we can classify the messages or classify the test data now we take another example we take another example okay. i can see that is it visible to all the participants are you able to do this code bayesian implementation implementation of bayesian belief network using pomegranate library now you can see that by this way we can put the data and the so i'll first of all i'll show you very simple you see the so from pomegranate import star so import star means all packages you are importing and this is the data okay so if you want to find out the probability whether it is available so obviously uh, it will give the probability of this particular data set if it is available if it is not available in that case it will not give the probability suppose if i write here 128 so 128 is not available and then you will see first of all the exactly is so you can see that we have created a db dummies and by then we by the network dot com sample so now you can see from this data set how much probability is associated with this particular data set this much how much probability is available with this particular data set this much 133 so 133 is nowhere in this particular thing so there is no combination it means the directed sip graph that is generated at the back end that is that is not having any combination that is not able to create this particular combination okay if we take 124 then 124 Will be having a particular combination. So by this and finally we use this function bnet or bayesian net dot bake. 
So this is the baking of a particular network. First of all, we create a particular network and then we bake it. Now I'll tell you about a particular segmentation that is related to a particular gaming application. Okay. One of the very famous gaming application is that is your multi hole problem. Multi hole dashed problem. How many of you are aware with this particular problem? With this particular game, multi hole dashed problem. Yes or no? In chat you can respond. How many of you are aware with this particular problem? This particular gaming application, multi hole problem, and this problem can be solved. This problem can be analyzed using Bayesian networks. So, actually, in case of multi hole problem, you might have. Uh, heard about this particular problem on different YouTube channels, on different games also. If I'm going to on the screen. Suppose you are given three gates. These are three gates. Okay. Uh, in some, after some moment you will say that uh, you have heard about this problem. Okay. When I will explain this, then you will say that okay, you have heard about this problem. This is, and there are multiple gates. This is A, this is B, and this is C. Okay, these are three gates or three doors. We are having three, three doors A, B, and C. Out of these three doors, only one door is having a price. One door. Only one door. Price is behind only one door. But initially we don't know under uh, which particular door should be opened and so that we can get that particular price. Okay. In multi hole problem, uh, the price is given as a car. Okay, so suppose uh, you are given three gates or three doors, and you are asked to open any of these, and you are given only one chance. Okay, and if you will be able to extract, if you will be able to view or identify the car, in that case, that will be yours without any without any uh, cash or without any amount. Okay, have you understood this problem? But in but is uh, actually inside this particular column, inside this particular game, you might have seen uh, so many times similar type of problems. If you are given three gates or three doors, why? And nobody knows behind which particular door there is a price. If there is a particular car or there is a particular price. But you are given only one chance. Okay. So obviously, uh, by default, with each and every Door, there is one by three probability 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.3. So, obviously, 0 0.33 or uh, 1 by 3 is the probability of each and every door to win the price. Okay, is this point clear to all of you? Are you getting this point? So what is multi hole problem? This is known as multi hole problem. Now, using Bayesian belief network. We can analyze it. So, what multi hole problem says that, and it will be, uh, it will, uh, it will look uh, something spiritual to you also if we, are, if we discuss this, this point. As far as multi hole problem is concerned, it is said that. Suppose I say that I want to take B gate, I want to, and I want to. B. 
suppose randomly i choose b or suppose randomly i choose c and the other person the owner of the game whoever is hosting this particular game if owner is saying me that please this that you can decide once more okay i'm repeating this point i nobody knows which is the uh, where is the prize behind a or b or c if i am a particular person who is playing this particular game suppose i take c randomly i i take okay uh, let's open c door and we will see whether there is prize or not if the other person if the hosting person of the game says me to rethink in that case there are more chances that there will be no prize behind c are you getting this point it means suppose i am taking a particular decision as far as multi hall problem is concerned if i take if i want to take a particular decision and i am having three possible outcomes a b or c if i take c and if somebody else tell me to rethink in that case there will be more chances of winning there will be more chances of getting prize or getting on railing getting more benefit in other two are you getting this point so you can relate it spiritually or emotionally or whatever it is but this is the fact okay and this is the main theme behind your multi goal problem are you getting this point is this point clear to all of you is this point clear to all the participants okay i am repeating this point suppose you are given three options you are given three options and if you are told that okay out of a b and c if you will open that page suppose a b and c are three pages if you will open actually there is a prize there is cash below only one page below only one sheet okay but nobody knows about it suppose i take only a i take that okay let's check a if the other person says me to rethink Uh, whether it is a confirm or uh, you, you want to take another chance of b or c without opening a in that case there will be more chances that the actual cash will be in b or c it means the first decision there will be more chances of wrong wrong thing or wrong decision behind the first decision have you understood this point suppose if i take c uh, suppose if i take b okay in that case if somebody or if the hosting person says me to rethink in that case there will be more chances that prize will be either with a or c rather than actual b that i have selected yes this is just an assumption definitely it is it may not be true but it is an assumption this is very true it cannot be a global fact it is definitely the assumption and uh, we should uh, consider this okay now we see this particular thing now you can see that in this code we have imported the library from a pomegranate and the discrete distribution is allocated so what is meaning of this this the distribution function we are allocating 1 by 3 1 by 3 1 by 3 so each and every option is given equal probability okay and after that these are the this is your conditional probability table okay so obviously this is zero probability if this is the uh, this is your uh, combination this is your another combination and we want to create its diagram
now you can see that and this code this it is available in omegrain dot also now you can see that at first instance at first attempt equal uh, possibility equal probability with each and every solution a b and c but at next at final you can see as, as soon as there is option of rethinking if b is selected in that case a and c will be having more chances of winning so what we can do this is very very simple very class, classical situation very classical problem that we can use uh, similarly we can uh, perform the implementations we can uh, program the scenario uh, using uh, some particular disease or the using some particular data set of uh, malware now if you see similar thing now you can see that if we let this this type of diagram that this is the conditional probability table and from conditional probability table we want to predict which particular value should come with this particular thing a b and a c c b so you can see that C B A. If I C C, in that case, what will happen? C C B. C C B. From where I can check it? C C B. C C B or C C B combination. And A A. A, A, B. So it will check whether there, uh, if there is something, uh, if there is some combination available in the conditional probability table or no. If it is not available, or if it is not able to create the combination in that case, obviously the output will not be available. Okay. So. I will share you this code also. And now you can see if we discuss another very, very simple point, very simple thing like uh, this posting problem. Okay, suppose these are the results heads, tails, and then again tails, then heads. Now, with heads, the possibility of honest outcome is 0.5, and cheating out outcome is. 0.5. Okay, and tails. Honest outcome is 0.5, and cheating outcome is 0.5. And then I want to find out the whether there is some cheating. Available or not? Okay, so you can see that now. If I modify this, suppose it had honest is 0.2 and cheating is 0.8. Okay. So if I want to see that, so 94%, 94.12% will be there. The chances will be there for cheating, and only 5.88% chances will be there for honest. So by this, so all these things, all these probabilities, we can integrate here. So if with the tails, if tails is coming, then honest output is 0.8 and cheating is 0.2. It means some particular trick is used. As far as cheating is concerned, if heads, if heads is coming, then 0.4. So obviously. Some of these two will be one, okay. and now you can see that to find out how much uh, percentage of cheating is there, 
3.7 and MST is 97.3. So you can see that in this case also, if edge is coming in that case, this and this is the probability and this is the probability. If I am taking tails, if all if three times tails is coming and only once heads is coming. So, you can see that. so this is your conditional probability table. This is known as your conditional probability table. So we have to put all the possibilities. I will share all these source codes with the detailed documentation to all the participants. Okay. All these source codes with the detailed documentation, with the detailed manual that will be shared to all the participants by mail. Okay. And uh, uh, along with that, I will send you some um, books also, some tutorials also, specific to some uh, to research problems, specific to uh, particular research aspects, and uh, that you can evaluate. If we are expecting that all heads are coming, if all heads are coming and the honest probability is this, now I want to see if equal probability is in the heads and tails, then what will happen? So, obviously, you can see that 50 percent. If I say that honest is one, one. Cheating is zero. Then what will happen? So obviously, zero percent cheating will be there. So obviously, if we have integrated some level of cheating, that will be integrated. So zero point two. If tails is coming, then and now in this case, so obviously if we are integrating the flavor of cheating, in that case definitely it will show that how much cheating may be there in that particular game. But if we say that there is no cheating, the game is completely transparent, there is no biasing, cheating is zero. Then you will see that cheating is zero percent and honest is hundred percent. So by this way, what we can do now? This is the case of actors. If we yes, uh, are you getting the audio? Their participants are you getting the audio clearly? If if you now this is the case of head and tail. Okay, only a coin. Suppose I want to check how much cheating is there in a in MRI machine. How much probability of cheating is there in an ultrasound machine? Okay, how much probability is there in a specific test? It updates from events as far as events goes. So all these data sets are integrated and then at the back end the directed acyclic graph is generated. Okay. So if I am cheating and yes. this also. Yes, this is the this is the package. Bios is the package. Uh, Biosian is the package, and from that we are integrating this particular function. Okay, and uh, one assignment I will give you from this task, and one assignment from a particular data set. I will give you two assignments for, for today's session, and then on the basis of that particular assignment. Uh, all of you will be evaluated. Okay, so you can practice all these things. I will share the complete source course 
and all source codes i will share in such a way so that you can every line will be clear as far as uh, probability data is concerned actually uh, in, if probability data is not available in that case we can assume it it is it is assumed if, if we are not having the probability data in that case assumptions can be done okay. otherwise uh, on the basis of uh, historical data we can create the probability table Now we will take another approach for supervised learning. That is random forest approach, and uh, it is used for classification as well as regression. This is the approach that is used. Or that can be used for solving any of these problems, whether it is concerned with classification or regression. And random forest approach, these are key properties of random forest approach. Enormous trees are generated. Enormous trees are generated. Each and every tree. Each tree is having a decision tree, or you can see that each outcome is a decision tree with possible outcome. Okay, so, and best outcome is selected using total votes. Using total voting. From all the decision trees, we can find out the best solution. Okay, and every human being, every human being implements random forest approach in routine life. Even we also use random forest approach for decision making. For decision. Are you getting the audio clearly, dear participants? Are you getting the audio? Is it audible to all the participants? So each and every human being, whether that person is professional or non-professional, everybody use this approach for decision making. Actually, what happens if you take a very simple example of A random forest approach. By which way we can we implement random forest approach in routine life? For example, I am having the budget of ten thousand rupees. Suppose I am having a budget of ten thousand rupees, and I am having five days to spend, or five days to travel. I want to move to a particular tourist destination for five days. Okay, for anything you can take for three days. You can take any any insert column you can take. Okay, I need. I have three days for traveling, total ten thousand rupees, and two persons or three persons. Now, using which scenario, by which way we use random forest approach? Generally, what happens to solve this problem? Suppose uh, I want to solve this particular problem, ten thousand rupees for three days, three persons. Where I can go? I will call one of my friend. So, 
friend one will give me solution that okay uh, in this particular budget you can go to some law or you can go to the solution okay. this is first solution f1 is the first solution friend one friend one told me to this place or this place second person gives me solution okay in this budget you can only go to baby third person give me solution that okay in this particular budget uh, you can move to arigma or this is like this suppose these are three different solutions three friends multiple solutions okay friend 4 baby friend 5 baby or now this is your decision this is your random forest this is your first decision tree this is your second decision tree and from that decision tree this is the output this is third decision tree with these two outputs and finally what i will do i will count the total votes okay total votes for okay daily is coming 1 2 3 3 times daily and 2 uh, times So total counting, total voting is in favor of this. So I will adopt this. So this is random forest approach in real life, and everybody uses it. Are you getting this point? Is it clear to all of you? Is this point clear to all of you? What is meaning of random forest approach, and by which way we implement? Okay. So we take so many solutions. Every doctor use random forest approach. Whenever we go to a doctor, suppose day one, I I give my symptoms, I give my problem to my to our doctor. Then what what that particular doctor will do? That doctor will give me medicines. Okay, you take M. G and T. These are three medicines. Okay, and after that, that doctor will tell me, okay, come after two days. Then day, uh, then day three. After two days, I went. Okay. Then, but uh, he ask, he will ask me, okay, uh, what is the situation? I will say that, okay, it is okay, but uh, not hundred percent cure. In that case, what that doctor will do? That doctor will replace the medicines M, G with X and we need to keep suppose and then again come after two days then day 5 okay m as it is and x and a is modified to suppose j and now cure then i will when it will come to know in the sight of that person in the knowledge of doctor that okay this combination is good in every iteration in every decision tree m is the solution so one is the m and second is x and third may be arbitrary like this from g t a j or j can be taken like this so this is your so this is your first decision tree this is your second decision tree okay so many decision trees are created and every person uses so each and every person try to get so many solutions from so many persons and then we check to see how many people are in favor of which particular solution that is random forest approach same thing you can implement in traffic evaluation same thing you can implement in cloud computing like you are having a particular data center you are having a specific algorithm you are having the uh, log files then with which particular combination you are getting the best output so you are implementing genetic algorithm you are implementing anm you are implementing all the approach at the end so uh, and two data centers this with four data centers this is this is two data centers and then you can find out all the possibilities and then we can come to know which particular solution which particular combination is giving us the best output so that is random forest approach and it is very high performance uh, technique that is used for research and development that is used for predictions
and uh, now if we we'll see implementation part in case of random forest approach we want to implement it in python I'm showing you that data set. So this is the data set. First of all, I will show you the data set. This is the data set. One is this position, position ID, suppose one, two, three, whatever it is, position, level, and salary. Okay. So we are having this particular data set, and from this particular data set. We want to predict the values. So as you can see, that first of all, we have imported the packages. Import numpy as and the matplotlib we have imported. Just import the diagram and this data set we have read. And from this data set, we have taken the values. And inside this particular data set, uh, the implementation you can see. Learn dot ensemble. Actually, this technique is known as ensemble learning. This technique in which we use multiple decision trees in random forest approach that is known as ensemble. Okay, so in psychic learn, as yesterday also I have shown you, this is the package. This is the portal as cited learn dot org and uh, in this you can see random forest is in regression also it is in classification also okay so its package is available its complete documentation is available you can take this so with Anaconda, this particular package comes by default. So from sklearn dot ensemble import random forest regression. Okay. So we have imported the, that particular class. Okay. This is your package and this particular feature we have extracted and the random forest regressor and estimators and estimators is equal to 80 80 means how many trees we want to generate number of trees and as far as the output is concerned sklearn dot ensemble it is in scikit learn so actually in python scikit learn is available as sklearn from sklearn dot ensemble that there is random forest regressor or you can go to random forest classifier so this code is uh, this code is uh, around 15 to 20 lines of code actually with so many comments i have commented so, so much things so uh, just to explain all these things okay but actually the code is very very less so n estimators it. Suppose you are not getting a good output, you are not getting the uh, results effectively. In that case, you can increase the estimators also. Okay. Trees we want to generate. And regressor would fit x, y input data and its target value. And what, what we want to predict this. Suppose, first of all, I if I admit it onto this part, I'm removing these comments also. So just to absorb it. Okay. Okay, only this part. Only this part we have taken. Okay. Salary is both CSV and uh, NST methods. The accuracy, the performance or output we depend on number of trees so many trees so many solutions and best outcome will be available now you can see that yes. okay. 
now if i want to predict a particular value for prediction suppose i want to predict a particular value from this particular model suppose i want to predict the value for 6.5 so y underscore correct so l 6.5 is by default not available so this this is your l underscore s5 so 6.5 is in between this so what may be the output of 6.5 If I want to predict for eight point, and and if you want to plot this particular thing for plotting, we use. Not only so once we split the model, so automatically it will create the uh, trees. I use it on here. And then y underscore that. And for plotting, we use this. So first of all, we create the grid, x grid, and y grid. So comment if each and every line of code is mentioned. So min max is used. So whatever minimum value is there, whatever maximum value is there, and what is the interval? So as far as code understanding is concerned, the complete documentation is available. So this is your plotting random forest trees. So by this way. You can load the values. And on any data set, you can use it. As far as your assignment is concerned, that I uh, that uh, you will have to pay. I will share that particular data set on uh, Google Classroom or the uh, mail you will receive it. And then uh, from that particular data set, you will have to use the random forest approach. I will share that in your Now after this particular session, suppose I take 100 estimators, then you can see what will be the output. If I remove these things, simply I'm taking suppose print y underscore that. If 100 distances are taken, then this is the output. If if we take Suppose I am taking less number of things, uh, removing the unwanted lines, which are not required. Comments. Suppose I want to take this 90. Okay, in 90 we will output what will be the prediction in 90 1260. So this is the output corresponding to this particular input. If I want to increase. Suppose 120 estimators are taken. In that case, 12662. Earlier it was 12674. So why the values are getting changed? Because if we are increasing the estimators, then it is generating more number of pieces and trees. And if we are generating more number of pieces and trees, then definitely. The result will be modified. Okay, and one more thing for the random forest approach is that that random forest approach automatically removes the noise. Okay, 
over you can see that noisy outputs automatically removed okay are you getting this thing automatically remove, remove the noise it is it is completely noise free uh, algorithm why it is noise noise free algorithm are you getting the audio clear participants with the audio coming to all the participants clearly okay now why why which way why uh, why it is said that it is, it is uh, not noisy that noise is removed okay i am coming to that solution again i am coming to that problem again okay this is this was my problem earlier now this is not noise this is not noise is it visible to all of you this is the genuine data because so many people are suggesting this okay is this visible to all the participants visible and audible now by which way we can analyze the, that random forest approach automatically remove the noise so this is not noise suppose some particular person person means this decision tree tells me bank this is noisy data because it is not possible to move this place for three days in 10000 rupees with three persons this is noisy data if some particular person says that okay f7 says this is decision tree says goa this is also noisy because noise is removed automatically because of minimum occurrences in the output so how many persons will say me this output how many persons will say me this output obviously out of 100 friends only one only one person will say me this thing okay just uh, just to uh, have a fun another person if uh, says me this output obviously that person must be doing fun with me okay so this is also a fun so funny you can see that in real life we call these things as funny outputs but in real in technically we call these things as your noisy data so that's why the noisy data is automatically removed because we finally check so many solutions and the performance depends on many decision trees so obviously if i will ask only two to two to three persons in that case i will not get good solution if i will ask uh, five persons only in that case also I, it, it may not give me good solution but if i am asking 20 persons then i will get good solution if i will ask 30 persons then i will get good solution so more number of decision trees more number of solutions and there will be more chances there will be more probabilities of counting more voting more voting will be done okay so by this way we can work with this with participants you can ask your queries with participants you can ask your queries yeah if anybody has any questions kindly type it in the chat box or raise your hands i'll unmute you and i request to the participants if you are having a specific uh, please participants i request all of you if you want to ask uh, a specific thing about your particular uh, research perspectives so please communicate in uh, in uh, by mail only okay because explanation of uh, the research problems or some particular codes uh, uh, in very short time it is it is not possible so we request to please communicate separately by mail if you want to discuss something special or uh, something related to your own research work but uh, here it is requested to please ask for 
general queries your specific queries to this session only as far as yeah. random ha uh, thank you gaurav yes ma'am uh, thank you ma ha uh, thank you thank you thank you so much that you have nicely told about all this process of regression techniques and all and uh, i am definitely sure that all this practical what you have done the participants had done themselves so uh, i just want to know that are they doing them themselves in their own laptop can you just write in in the chat that you are doing on your own in your laptop otherwise demo if we if uh, 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 dr godav if he gives demo no he is telling everything but if you don't do on your laptop then it will be of no use are you doing it very good some answers i am getting that he is doing it as well yes you have to do very good you have to do yourself right then only you will get to know more and more and please ask questions regarding this session that what you have learned in this session and of course his email id is well, he will be giving you then if you want to ask some specific question regarding your research work and something you are getting difficulty that time he you can just uh, uh, email to him then definitely he can give the answer very nice very nice yes everyone is doing is in, in google collab and i am very happy that you are doing yourself very nice yes now uh, kamal you can go for the questions yes sir first question from uh, miss mala malik what is random state value for yes. Uh, random state value is uh, actually this is an integer value that uh, any integer value we can specify whether it is zero, one, five. Actually, uh, the random state value is used to remember the data that is trained in the previous iteration to avoid the problem of overfitting. If we do not use random state value in that case, same subset of data can be retrained repeatedly that will be taken by the algorithm repeatedly and it will give the issue of uh, overfitting so to avoid it uh, if you will provide random state is equal to 0 that doesn't matter if you provide random state is equal to 5 it doesn't matter any numeric value you can specify so that uh, in that particular area it will remember the data set that is already taken for training uh, next question from Mr. Bipin Singh. You said random forest can automatically remove the noise. Can you explain it how? I mean, how to explain how random forest reach its decision? Okay, as uh, we have seen this example that uh, in a particular budget, uh, which particular destinations are available. As you can see that in first decision tree, suppose this is the outcome. So this is your first solution. This is your second solution. Okay, this is uh, this is second decision tree. This is third decision tree. So what we do, suppose I want to get solution from a particular problem, in that case we ask so many people. In decision tree also, we ask so, uh, we ask the solution from so many decision trees, okay, in random forest approach. And then uh, we find out which, uh, how many decision trees are in favor of a single solution. So that is your random forest approach, it counts the voting. So, as you can see that in first, uh, this is the solution, in second, this is the solution. And finally, we count, okay, uh, multiple occurrences or different occurrences or highest number of votings are in this particular value. So, it may be the first solution. So, first solution may be, second solution if you want to see in descending order. So, uh, this, like this, okay. So, by this way, we can generate all possible solutions from a particular uh, problem. As far as noise removal is concerned, uh, if somebody gives some vague output, some vague output means suppose somebody say that okay, this is your vague output. So it means obviously it will be having only one or two occurrences.
So can we take the next question? Yes, sir. Please take the next question. Sir. Question is from Mr. Sevakram Tanaji. In Python, do we have command for help like doc in MATLAB? Please repeat, sir. Yes, sir. I'll repeat. In Python, do we have a command for help like doc in MATLAB? Yes, yes. In actually, uh, it is not by default available, but uh, we can integrate it. We can enable it. Or it is uh, actually depending upon the version, the documentation is different. So it is better to uh, move for the uh, Python documentation. Python docs are available, and from Python docs, you can see that. Uh, which particular function is available specific to your own algorithm, specific to your own uh, distribution. Next question from Mahindra R. Uh, Umbarkar. Please repeat the interpretation of varying the estimation in the example. As far as the uh, number of estimators are concerned, uh, it means uh, how many decision trees we want to generate? If we, uh, in that case, every decision tree will be created from the entire data set. So, we, so there is no specific formula. There are. Uh, this is basically hit and trial process. We have to see how many records are there. Suppose a number of records are 1,000. In that case, we can uh, generate the decision trees like 1,000 or 1,200 or 1,500. If we if we want to further check uh, that whether output is getting changed, then we can generate decision trees like this. So, number of decision trees uh, that we want to fetch from the solution. The next question from Mr. Harsh Bansal. In case of skewness, uh, we will get one answer all the time. It depends, sir. Actually, it depends on the data set and the research objective that you are uh, working with. So, if the data set is uh, normalized, if it is standardized properly, in that case, it, is, it will not be the case. So, actually, as far as the uh, output is concerned, uh, related to particular thing, so it depends on the uh, attributes we have taken and uh, its uh, variance, uh, its different attributes. Next question from Virendra Singh uh, Kushwa. Uh, sir, could you explain that in terms of accuracy, is random forest better than others? Because for any problem solution, accuracy is more important. Please explain. Yes, actually, uh, as far as accuracy is concerned, random forest is considered better uh, as compared to other. But main thing is, uh, it is this particular algorithm is a resource hungry algorithm. So many uh, iterations are there, so many decision trees are generated. So, if, if the data set is very, very large, in that case, uh, so many thousands, millions of decisions will be created. Okay. But if you are if you are having sufficient uh, data set, uh, not very big data set, in that case, you can implement random forest approach. So, so for limited uh, data set, limited size of data set, you can implement it with higher accuracy and high performance. because. Uh, you will be in need of uh, specific hardware also, specific processors also. Sir, next question is from uh, Ms. Kamalinder Kaur. Sir, can we do coding in Visual Code of Python? Yes, definitely. VS Code, uh, VS Code is uh, generic ID. You can use any any of the platform, whether Spider or Jupyter or VS Code or Eclipse is also available, so it's up to the configuration. But gen generally, it is preferred to use Spider or Jupyter. For web based, Jupyter is used. For standalone applications, you can use Spider. Next question from Mr. Darpan Anand How do we test the accuracy of a random forest? For testing the accuracy, we can, uh, if we are having the final outcomes. As uh, in yesterday's session, we have also covered about vision matrix. If we are having the tar targets, and uh, uh, using that particular target labels, we can plot the confusion matrix uh, and to check whether this particular data is trainable or not. And uh, I will share the share the code of that also. How to work with uh, accuracy evaluation on random forest approach? I will share it separately. Next question from uh, Dr. Uh, Bignaraj Nayak. Sir, do random forest capable to handle imbalanced data set? 
yes definitely uh, you can use it uh, for imbalanced data sets also there is no issue but also main thing is actually uh, simply uh, we can't generalize this statement whether it is applicable for imbalanced data set or not we have to see which type of imbalance uh, nature is there in that particular data set whether it is uh, image based or video based or simply csv uh, feature, csv based feature points are available next question sir uh, next question from you uh, kartik chandra patnayak can random forest handle outliers yes definitely uh, as we have uh, discussed that in random forest approach deals with outlier deals with the noisy data uh, automatically so noisy data is uh, can be related to outliers so if some if some particular decision tree has given some output which is very very vague which is out of the way so out of the way means outlier that is not related to that particular cluster so uh, it can handle the outliers next question from mr varun goel how to choose the optimal number of decision trees so there is no uh, hard and fast tool there is no mathematical formula uh, uh, we have to check uh, by varying the decision trees by varying the number of decision trees and uh, then we can find out the accuracy the accuracy measurement i will uh, tell you separately i will share in separate code next question uh, n padmavati sir for optimization of electrical energy concern shall i use random forest approach or linear regression algorithm uh, in this domain if you are having uh, the benchmark data uh, standardized data in that case random forest will be okay for energy optimization so what you can do using random forest approach you can you can also identify the root cause of a particular thing suppose in a particular uh, in a particular uh, data set you, you want to find out which particular device or which particular uh, transformer is giving best output then using random forest approach you can find out that root cause also okay so uh, random forest is not only used for prediction it is also used for identifying the root cause of a specific data, data set Sir, next question from Ms. Manpreet Kaur. Sir, how random forest works in data splits? In data splits, uh, uh, similar to artificial neural networks, you can uh, take a split of 70, 30, or uh, 80, 20. But generally, it is uh, not uh, uh, suggested. Uh, we can directly take the data, complete data set in case of a random forest approach. If we, if we are taking any other type of algorithm, in that case, we go for 70-30 split or 80-20 split. The random forest approach is able to take the entire data at once with high performance, with high accuracy. Uh, so, next question is from uh, Mr. Darpan Anand. There is a elbow method for best count of clusters. Is there any method for the number of decision trees? To work with this, uh, we can work with, uh, we can integrate network X library. Actually, in Python, suppose you have created a particular uh, uh, random forest, you have created so many decision trees. We can integrate those decision trees, we can map those decision trees in network X library, and then we can find out all the nodes and all the decision trees uh, which are generated. Uh, sir, no more questions. So, thank you so much for the session, sir. Okay, okay bye. Mahindra sir, I just saw your, uh, you wanted to ask about the participation. Yeah, I had a word with ma'am, so that is okay. Uh, you are participating via ATAL only and the certificates are uh, will be given from the uh, ATAL uh, scheme only. So, I think that makes it clear. So, so today evening I will send all the uh, attachments and uh, the recordings do take a lot of time so uh, gradually i'm not able to send in the evening so by night only i'll be able to send you the link so please be patient and uh, thank you so much for your participation today thank you so much gaurav sir so we'll meet for tomorrow's session uh, at 9:30 a.m
so i request you to be on time so because when your uh, attendance will be compiled all your in and times in and out times will be recorded so if you don't want any issue so please be be on time thank you so much